Well, it looks like we've got some honey oak in need of some love. Hi, I'm Melissa with Sentimental Salvage and Design, and we are going to turn this plain old beauty into a stunner. Okay, so I am painting a new display cabinet. I don't paint things white ever, furniture wise. But this piece is getting a base in white and then I have plans for color to add to it. So I am going to be priming this piece with a stain blocker, a tannin blocker, a odor blocker that's got all the things. So I'm using, this is, it's called Kills. This is the stuff and it is not water-based. So this will really seal everything in. Um, but you have to, uh, you have to wash all your stuff with mineral spirits or acetone, which is a giant pain in the butt, but this is the primer I have. I bought it years ago. It's been sitting here in the garage. I've never used it. So I am going to be using it today. So let's get going. I don't think I'm going to need more than one coat, but I might just to be safe. I don't think this piece is going to be a big issue. I'm just nervous because I'm painting white and that's just not something I ever do. So I figure I might as well save myself some grief and actually I don't get any bleed through just in case. Okay, so I have done one coat of primer on this hutch. I've got another coat of one coat on that piece. That's the bottom. Um, I have been using, I've been using this primer because I bought it years ago. It's been sitting here in my garage forever unopened. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. It's very, very thick. I'm not doubting that it's gonna work awesome, but it's too thick. It's too much of a pain to work with. Maybe it would be better rolling it on, but all my rollers are at the store workshop. They're not here at home in my garage. So I was brushing it on, which it says you can brush it on, but I don't know what the heck, how they brush it on. Cause it's like brushing on Elmer's glue, not kidding. So I've done two coats on the outside of this piece and I'm done. I'm, I'm, I, I aborted mission. I am going to let this dry completely overnight and then I'm gonna give it a light sanding tomorrow to smooth out all the goop. And then I'm going to give it another coat with my DIY paint salvation solution because I know what that stuff works like and it's awesome and it doesn't smell as bad as this. I've got an overhead fan going, an exhaust fan. I've got a box fan blowing and windows open and it bloody well stinks. So that is what I have accomplished today. A little bit of annoyance, but we are going to get this piece ready to go and you'll see all the exciting new stuff that's coming up. All right, stay tuned. Day two of my priming fiasco I've got going on here. I um, was initially starting to prime this piece with um, Kills Primer because it's what I had here handy in my garage and I hated it. So this morning I ran to my store and I picked up my salvation solution from DIY Paint and this is the white formula. This also comes in a clear formula. So if you want to 
um, paint something and then be able to distress it back to the natural wood color, you would use the clear formula. So you still would get the protection from the tannins and bleed through and anything like that, but you would still be able to easily distress it back to the natural wood without having to sand through white primer, if that makes sense. Um, so this is all primed now. It's good to go. I've got the base done. So that, and it all turned out awesome. The drawers are done, the cupboard doors are done. So tomorrow I am going to be painting and to paint it, I'm gonna be using the new DIY paint cottage colors. This is the new all-in-one paint that is curated by Jamie Ray Vintage. And this is the white linen. So this piece is gonna be base coated in white. It is not going to be bold, stark white. Um, Y'all know I don't, I, I never paint anything white. Um, so there will be color. So look forward to that. Hopefully I get started on the fun part um, this week, later this week. And you guys are gonna have to stay tuned to see what that's gonna look like. Okay, so two coats of DIY paints. This is the new One Step paint. It's got built-in top coat. This is white linen. I've used about three quarters of this can to do two coats on this um, china cabinet thing. We're gonna call it a thing for now. Second coat is drying. I think two coats is gonna do it. I don't think I'm gonna have to do any touch-ups. So two coats of primer, two coats of white linen, and we are ready to add some color. So this is what's gonna go on the back of the china cabinet. I'm gonna be using this Morocco paint inlay. So I'm just gonna, I've already primed and base coated this in white, but I just used spray paint because it was that nasty brown, fake um, wood grain finish. So I'm painted it white, it's ready to go. I am going to be using DIY's White Swan to use for the inlay. And so this is, there's eight sheets in here and it's really, really pretty. But then as a super awesome surprise in my stash, I found these knobs. So I wanted to put new knobs on the cabinet. There's two drawers and three doors on the bottom. And these are perfect match with this Morocco paint inlay. The only problem I have with it is that the little center part and the base are silver. And I am going to paint them gold. I have some gold spray paint, so I am going to use that. And I'm excited to see how those are gonna turn out. So the paint inlay sheets have this border around um, the edges and you want to trim that off so that you can line everything up perfectly. I'm just connecting the sheets and I'm using just normal scotch tape to attach them together. Okay, so now I'm going to, I've got everything lined up where I want them to be, and I'm just going to stabilize the sheet with a, two little pieces of scotch tape, just so that when I flip it up, it will stay put where, I, where I've lined it up to be, so it doesn't move around. This is just DIY paint in White Swan. You want to brush this on in a fairly heavy, thick coat and an even coat. You don't want thin spots and thick spots. You want it to be pretty even. That's going to give you the best result with your inlay. little bit more paint. I 
I'm using a Klingon paintbrush. Um, these are kind of my favorites. This one is the F50, I believe. I'd have to double check on that, but I'm pretty sure this is the F50. Now I'm just going to gently apply the inlay and I'm just pushing it down as I go just with gentle pressure. I'm not really smashing on it here. You just want to get that inlay to sit into the paint. You just really want to make sure you have no lifted spots because if the inlay is not sitting into the paint, it won't transfer into the paint. And I forgot to bring a brayer. Usually I would use a brayer or a silicone paint blade or something to help get that down, but I'd forgotten it at the store. So now I got to take off my little pieces of tape so I can lift up the other side. And same process on this side. I get those little squirt bottles at um, Walmart, actually. They're just in the kitchen section. And I like them because they have the little lids and I don't have as much problems with them plugging up as I did with the FIFO bottles, the first in, first outs. Um, those bottles work really good, but I found that I would end up with the tip clogging all the time and it was, it was just frustrating. So I kind of like these little ones better. Trying to work out any little wrinkles. The wrinkles aren't a big deal, they just kind of add character so I'm not super worried about it but this did go down very flat so I didn't really have any issues with that. It was a little tricky to get that transition point right in the middle because I didn't want to damage where the inlay had already um, applied to the paint but I needed to get this side's paint as close as I could. Okay now let's lay this second half down. Same process you just want to gently press it down And I did find even when using um, the big the big inlays, any inlay that you need to connect a bunch of sheets together, this is a pretty good method to do it. Don't try to do the whole thing at once, just try to make workable sections. It solves you a lot of hassle and a lot of frustration. And again, just make sure you get everything pressed down into that paint. 
this is easier with a brayer or a silicone paint blade but um, it kind of works just with your hands you can be a little bit more fine-tuned with it and now this is just a damp cloth it's not dripping wet but it's it's wet I'm just pushing this inlay down into the paint now wetting the backing paper helps to activate the paint the inlay paint and and let it release that backing paper and sit into the the painted piece Sometimes explaining inlay application is a little bit complicated because you've got paint, the inlay is paint, you're, you're inlaying the paint into the paint that you put on your project. It's, it sounds confusing, but it's a simple process. It just is kind of difficult to explain sometimes. Okay, so now I had little pieces of scotch tape that I had connected these sheets together with. So they're really easy to take off now because the dampness of the paint um, underneath the inlay sheets kind of releases it really easily. So now I just take those all off so I'm able to dampen the back of these inlay sheets. So you got to kind of go hunting for them. They were a little bit hard to find. If you leave those little pieces of tape there, you won't be able to dampen this backing paper to release the inlay. So it's kind of important that you take those off, otherwise you're gonna be left with these weird squares where you had it. And now I'm just gonna continue on in super speed and finish the other two rows. Same process. All right, so this is all dry now. And I didn't speed it along. I let it do its thing on its own. So now I'm just gonna mist it with water. To reactivate this. <clears throat> This is just a damp cloth. I'm gonna move you guys a little bit closer so hopefully you can see. That is coming off perfectly. Oh, okay, so there's one sheet. And I'm just going to 
lay this over here on my very dusty table saw so that can dry. And put you back. Here. You want to make sure that your paper is damp. So that the paint on the inlay is actually setting into the paint on your piece. dry and you can use them again and your second time will obviously be a little more distressed perfect okay so I want to show you something that I noticed as I'm taking this off. You can see this sheet came off. The image is perfect. Like it's really deep and crisp and, and then you can see here, right here, this is where the next page kind of started or this next half. And I didn't use as much paint. This was the first half that I did and I was a little bit more skimpy with my paint. So this side just looks a little bit more distressed than this side. But not a huge difference, just that's why it looks like that. I didn't quite use enough paint. So I'm going to continue and take the other two rows off. All right, so now we have the inlay applied, but now we have to seal it. So how I seal the inlays initially is I have a little mister bottle here with these markings on it. So basically what I do is this is Big Top. This is DIY Paints Big Top. So this is the, the top coat sealer and up to the first line, I'm going to put Big Top. So I'm going to mix this 50-50 with water. I'm just going to steal some water out of my big mister bottle and fill it up to the next line. Okay, so 
So now I've just effectively made my own little 50-50 mixture, big top and water, that I can spray through a mister bottle. The inlays are made out of a chalk style paint. So when you brush on a sealer, you're, you can smear them really easily and that would be super frustrating after all that work of applying them. So this is the best way. You can also use, um, I have some over there on the wall, any kind of water-based clear coat sealer that comes in a spray bomb. This just, I, I got used to using these products that don't have that, that smell. These low, no VOC products are just what I like using better. So I create my own little concoction and it works perfect. Okay, so let's make sure this works. There we go. And then we are going to mist the entire piece. And I'm just doing my best to make sure I get a light coat over the whole thing. Okay, I'm just going to go over it. is hard on the hand. Okay, so I've used half, so I will do a second coat on the whole piece and then it'll be ready for a brush on coat. I thought I would also add with your 50-50 mix of Big Top and um, water, don't leave it in this spray bottle. Um, the spray bottle should last a good amount of time. However, I would take it apart and really, really spray some, some uh, clean water through it because the mechanism inside doesn't like these sealants or paint or anything else. So to be able to use this a few times, I'd take this out if you have any leftover worth saving, take it out, put it in a little jar somewhere so that you've got it handy for next time and really clean your, your mister bottle out. Otherwise, it's just gonna clog up and it's not gonna work. So that's nine sheets of the IOD paint inlay called Morocco on the back. And it is painted in the new cottage color by DIY Paint in white linen. And these knobs that I had in my stash that I took apart and I just painted the metal parts gold instead of the silver. And the hinges have been painted gold. So it's almost done. I have a little bit of oomph I want to add to those sides that are kind of plain and boring. And then she'll be ready to go. Doesn't she look awesome? Ah, she's so cute. Okay, so this is my practice board and I want to create similar to that on the sides of this cabinet. That's why I've got it like this. So the colors that I'm using, I've got my stool. The colors that I'm using is DIY Paints Old 57 and Bohemian Blue and a little bit of metallic gold. These are all watered down quite a bit. So, here's hoping I don't wreck this. Okay, I want more of this. I'm just gonna go. How bad could it be, right? I don't want a lot of the boho because it's so... It's 
still very dark. And I guess I have to open this. And now some water. heat tool to buzz it around. I'm just using the heat tool here to kind of blow it around and mix it in how I want it to look. And I really don't know how I want it to look. I just know when it looks that way that that's how I like it. So I add water in bits too just to help it move. While the base is drying, I'm going to do the same technique on the side of the hutch. This technique takes a long time to dry because you are using a lot of water. You can kind of set it where you want to with the heat gun and then let nature take its course and let it dry on its own. Here's a closer look at how the paint is kind of pooled in spots. I like to let that dry on its own without any assistance from a heat tool because it gives a better almost like a tie-dyed or a watercolor finish. If you dry it with a heat tool all the way, you, all, you get some crackling, and which is great, but I don't want it here. And here she is. After sealing the decorative paintwork with Big Top, this little cabinet is ready to showcase some product. If you have any questions about the products or techniques that I used on this little cabinet, Feel free to pop them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and I hope I've inspired you to create your own furniture art.